So, um, so I forgot to, uh, put, to put a few things on the slides, like these names, uh, but also uh, I wrote Pons, I never put it on the slide. It's Prometheus Orthonormal Set, where a tiny defense contractor in the US and in defense, everything has an acronym. So PONS is our acronym for, for this. So um, there are many, uh, not many, but uh, uh, quite a few, maybe a dozen published papers about the underlying research. And uh, um, a lot of them are available on that website in case you're interested. So, uh, Free access. pardon me? Free access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you can put a quarter on the table if you want. <laughs> 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 so, but anyway, yep, no, just, uh, just go there and enjoy. Uh, and I guess, yeah. So, um, uh, the, 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 the Walsh functions have been mentioned quite a few times in uh, uh, this, uh, this conference now. And uh, sometimes we call these uh, PONS functions or PONS sequences or sometimes Pons waveforms, or Pons transform. And, uh, we call them, we think of them as an improvement of the Walsh functions. And I, I will say specifically what I mean by improvement, and also what I mean uh, on the first slide, you saw the title, energy spreading. Uh, I will say that we, we, we think, me in particular, I have, of course, a vested interest in all of this, but I in particular think that there's much more to be done. And there's something really fundamental in this engine energy spreading idea that we don't, we don't yet grasp. And I think it could end up being important, but it's been around for a while, and a few other people think it could be important, including some people in defense who are funding us quite generously. But what do they know? <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, okay. So, um, so the, the, the matrix, as with any transform, there's an underlying matrix. The one you're all most familiar with, I would think, is the discrete Fourier transform matrix. Uh, and the algorithm is the FFT, the fast Fourier transform, for, for using the um, Fourier transform for, for doing digital signal processing. Um, the, the Walsh matrix, the standard Walsh Hadamard matrix or Walsh matrix is also used in digital signal processing quite a bit. And it's a, uh, it's a Hadamard matrix, meaning it's orthogonal uh, um, square of size two to the n by two to the n for positive uh, non-negative integer n. And, and um, all the entries are plus or minus one. Now having entries plus or minus one makes it, uh, very, uh, is very useful for computations. So that's one reason why the Walsh uh, transform has been used and is still being used in the base. Uh, um, um, all of your phones uh, have the Walsh uh, are using the Walsh transform. Uh, it's fundamental in the CDMA uh, code division multiple access, which is what underlies all these crazy cell phones we all play with all the time. So um, the, 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 all uh, all of the rows. Uh, in, in pairs of a, of a Pons matrix, I'll call it a Pons matrix, are quadrature mirror filters. You prob probably never heard that expression. It's a little important in digital signal processing, but uh, I, I'll say very briefly what that is when it comes up. Um, now, what, what, what is interesting, so all these, all these investigations started from what are called the Shapiro polynomials, Harold S. Shapiro. It's a beautiful construction uh, that was in Harold's uh, thesis for, for the master's degree at MIT, an amazing document, this master's thesis. Uh, I don't know how many of you knew Harold Shapiro or know Harold Shapiro, but he was a wonderful person but, and a great mathematician. And um, what, what, uh, the, the, uh, the, the construction, the, 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 the basic problem that uh, uh, Harold's construction answered, and it's still open in, in some contexts, is you want to choose a polynomial with coefficients of modulus 1, and uh, therefore the L2 norm of the polynomial, according to the Passavall theorem, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the moduli of the coefficients. So if it's of degree whatever, n, then, then the, modula, then the uh, L2 norm of the polynomial is 
the, the square root of n, because they're n coefficients of modulus 1. So the Shapiro polynomials give you a construction where not only are the coefficients modulus 1, but they're just plus or minus 1. And the, the, the soup norm is square root of 2 times, times, the, uh, uh, times square root of n. So it's as, as small as possible, as far as we know, for coefficients plus or minus 1. There's a long history of, of the, these problems going back to Hardy and Littlewood. Uh, in fact, somewhere in my files back home, I have a letter from Littlewood to, talking about some work that Don Newman and I did on, on his conjecture about coefficients of modulus 1. Uh, unfortunately, there was an error in the work. <laughs> That's another story. Um, then uh, also, in a certain sense, the, 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 um, if that's for me, I'm not here. Uh, 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 it, it, it yields, uh, um, in a certain sp uh, specific sense, which I'll mention, optimal bounds with respect to a kind of global uncertainty principle. And uh, the, the correlation properties, which are extremely important for digital signal processing, the correlation properties of these rows or columns of, of the uh, of the uh, Pons matrices are excellent. So, um, uh, um, did I skip a page? No. Uh, it turns out I, um, you, you might know about read Muller codes. It's some a very important uh, topic in digital signal processing. And, and as it, it says, each row of every Pons matrix is what we call an energy spreading second order read Muller code. Again, I know I haven't said what energy spreading is, but it's, it's directly related to the fact, as I said, uh, for, the, for the Shapiro polynomials, for example, some of you might have heard of them as the Rudin Shapiro polynomials, but that's a misnomer. And I can tell you exactly why if anybody's interested offline. Um, uh, um, so, uh, so energy spreading means that the, 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 the mo uh, modulus of the polynomial is cl as close to constant as possible no matter which direction you go, uh, no matter where you are on the unit circle. So in, uh, in uh, engineering terms, the L2 norm is the energy. And so it's spreading the energy almost equally around the circle. Uh, all the uh, Pons matrices are symmetric, which is definitely not the case for the w standard walsh hadamard matrix. Uh, some of you, most of you probably have seen it. But anyway, all, all of all, uh, the first row is all ones. And every other row, the sum of the entries is zero. Uh, on the other hand, pi, uh, the Pons matrices, all, all of the row sums, if it's two to an even power, all of the row sums are equal to each other. Totally different from the walsh hadamard matrix. And th this is the fundamental reason why we, we get th th this energy spreading, because all the row sums are equal to each other. If it's two to an odd power, half the row sums are zero, and half the row sums are, are, are equal to each other, uh, square root of the length. So uh, why, why spread energy? I mean, and, and uh, when, when I first came up with this construction, and I, I say I, and it would, I did do it, but it was really, I mean, it, it took me quite a while to realize how simple it was, but it, it has many things in life. Once you not understand something, it turns out to be quite simple. It was a really simple extension of the Shapiro polynomials, re re really trivial, and you, you'll see in a minute how trivial it was, and still is. But, uh, but it, it has these extra properties. And um, because of this energy spreading, that we, you, you can use these rows of, of, of this matrix as waveforms to, to transmit radar signals or whatever. And in fact, they are being used by the US military. Uh, um, I can't say more than that, partly because I'm not supposed to, but also partly because I don't really know exactly how they're doing it. But for sure, they're doing it. They funded us to do all the research, and then they, they took it away. Oh, well. Um, uh, and so th th there's these acronyms LPI, LPD, uh, low probability of intercept, uh, intercept, sorry, low probability of detection. 
you, you can you can imagine why that's very important to uh, if you want to communicate things without other people knowing that it's there, uh, or then uh, it turns out to be quite important. Uh, something with, which I'll, I'll, I'll show. I, I wanted to show a demo, but unfortunately we couldn't attach the laptop to the uh, to, to output to the to the screen. But I have it on, on my laptop, and I'm going to cut the talk short in case some some people want to see it. Maybe you can stand around, and I will show it on my laptop. This demo, but it, it, it uh, what it shows, and I'll show pictures at the end here, uh, is that. Um, the, the, uh, you get gra very gradual uh, d degradation when there's noise. Uh, and the, the, the bottom uh, um, uh, line, but the bottom bullet, uh, is exactly what the demo shows, and I'll show a picture. So what we do is we have a stimulation of noise in the transmission channel. And there can be extreme noise in the tr transmission channel and still what, what, if, if you use, instead of transmitting the original signal, you take the Pons transform of that signal and then transmit it th th with the same exact noise in the transmission signal. That noise that's, that's uh, uh, um, uh, could be in the original signal concentrated in certain parts of it. It spreads that noise equally all, all around so that what you receive is usable. It's noisy. You, you don't eliminate the noise. It's not like there are other techniques uh, which do very intensive uh, uh, computational thing, tricks to, to, to remove noise, denoising they call it. This is not denoising at all. It's making the noise less important much less important, we believe. So, uh, the, 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 the computational behavior is very good. Most of you people probably don't, don't care about that, this aspect, but it, it's very good. I won't go into any details here. Uh, um, in case you don't know, um, F, FPGA, it's in the news now a lot. It's a field programmable gate array. And, and it's a, a very useful thing as opposed to using a general computer to, to do specific digital signal processing tasks. And because of the, the, the very elementary construction, the fact that all the entries in the matrix, matrices are plus or minus one, and, and also we, we have a computational algorithm that's just like the fast Fourier transform, so, so which caused a revolution in digital signal processing. Without the FFT, everybody, all engineers call it, you would not have these phones. It just it wouldn't happen. So, uh, so we, we have the same fast algorithms. Um, okay, so, so here's some, some of the underlying mathematics. Uh, we, we, so we, we started to, to look at this problem when we were thinking about a kind of a global uncertainty principle. And here, uh, as, uh, as Harold showed, um, it's impossible to have an infinite orthonormal set where all of the elements of the set and also all of the Fourier transforms, that's the standard Fourier transform, F hat, all of the elements of the set and all of the uh, uh, elements, all of the transforms of the elements of the set go to zero at infinity uh, with an order greater than a half on the bottom. Uh, that's impossible to have an infinite orthonormal set, w which does that. And the question was, well, what suppose p, p equals a half? And it was this Pons construction that gave, that, that gave uh, a, a construction of such a set. And the basic theorem is, is this. Uh, there's a complete orthonormal set for, say, the continuous functions. And I just chose minus pi pi, you know doesn't really matter, any finite interval, so that the, the, the elements of the set take on only plus or minus, oh, values only plus or minus one. So what the elements of that set are, you, you break up the interval, and in each of the subintervals, you, you use the, the coefficients from the Pons matrix. And uh, that's exactly how the set is constructed. 
and so so, so that we, we we get the, the exponent of, of a half on the bottom there uh, f for the transform and that that's on a finite interval and then by by the, the standard trick of dilation and translation you take this finite interval and you c cover the whole real line and and what what one gets what what's up there so that, that, that that's what we call a global uncertainty principle the, the, the basic um, uh, standard uncertainty principle in mathematics talks about an individual function and says that both it and its Fourier transform can't go to zero too quickly at infinity. And the, the classic example of the boundary pro the, of the uh, function that's on the boundary is the, the Gaussian function, basically e to the minus x squared. Okay, uh, so now. The Shapiro polynomials, and I mean, every time I see this, I don't have to see it to think about it, but it's such a beautiful, simple construction. So P0, we, we, we want to think of Z as being a point on the unit circle. And P0 and Q0 are identically one, and they're defined recursively. Pn plus one is Pn plus Z to the two to the n Qn. And Qn plus 1 is Pn minus Z to the 2 to the n Qn. And if you think about it for just a minute, uh, if the modulus of Pn plus 1 squared is the modulus of Pn squared plus the modulus of Qn squared plus twice the real part of the product, the modulus of Qn, squared, me, Qn plus 1 squared is the modulus of Pn squared plus the modulus of Qn squared and then a minus twice the real part of the product. So when you add them, the modulus of Pn plus 1 squared plus the modulus of Qn plus 1 squared is exactly twice the, the, the modulus of Pn squared plus modulus of Qn squared independent of Z on the unit circle. And you take that back to zero, the <laughs> modulus of Pn squared plus the modulus of Qn squared is constant everywhere on the unit circle. So that says that, that the, these individual functions can't be too big anywhere. They're, they're bounded by square root of 2 times, times the, uh, the, uh, the square root of the, the length of the sequences or uh, the, the, the number of terms in the polynomial. So here, here's the construction. Uh, the, the, and all, all I did, uh, so, so I just went through those properties. And that should say the bound there is square root of two, but for some reason it, it didn't c come across. And uh, so it, one, one can think of these as sequences of plus or minus ones, as coefficients of, of a polynomial, or as uh, values of a piecewise function on, uh, on, on an interval. And uh, what, what we wanted in order to form a basis for digital signal processing. So with, with digital signal processing, you, 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 you're talking about a, 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 a finite basis, not an infinite basis. Uh, so we, we break up the interval, say, from 0 to 1 or whatever finite interval you want to take into 2 to the n parts. What you want is 2 to the n functions, uh, piecewise constant functions, in order to form this basis. The Shapiro polynomials or constructions, sequences, however you want to define it, give you two functions. So how do you go from 2 to 2 to the n? Well, it turns out it took me, uh, I, I finally saw how simple it was flying back from Australia one of my trips in the plane. I said, oh, of course, what do you do with this? And here it is. So, so he, here's the, the, the first is 1 plus z and 1 minus z, or plus plus and plus minus. To, to get, get the next two rows, uh, Harold took, took the, the, the first row of this and, and, and took the first row plus plus and it joined the second row plus minus. Then he took the first row plus plus and it joined the negative of the second row made it minus plus. And that's what Harold did. And all I saw was that you could do it in reverse. So the plus minus is the second row of this with, with the, the first row adjoined. And the minus plus is the negative of the second row of this with, with the first row adjoined. And if you think about it, these four rows, 
If you think of them as piecewise constant functions on an interval, these four row functions are obviously orthogonal to each other. And, and so it, and, and you, you continue that, and it is totally trivial that you get the same properties as far as orthogonality goes as you do in the walsh hadamard system. Totally, and, uh, okay, so the, the mathematical property is this, is quite simple to prove, and that's, that's an equation that, uh, that says uh, with these things form what's called a quadrature mirror filter that I mentioned in the first or second slide. And that's important for digital signal processing, but not particularly for here. And it, the, the, there's that bound that we want that gives you the, uh, um, the, uh, the, the uh, global uncertainty principle that we had before. Uh, what, so compare, how much time? I don't want to. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Eight. Eight minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I, I, I really went through all of this. So, so I, I uh, uh, and also this being really a mathematics conference, the, these facts are, are not totally important to you unless you want to want to use your phone, and then they are important. But. Uh, and uh, as I said, Pons is Walsh plus. The, the Pons, the, the crest factor, I didn't, I didn't define it before. Crest factor, again, think of polynomials on the unit circle. The crest factor is the ratio of the soup norm uh, to the L2 norm. The L2 norm, because all the coefficients are plus or minus one, is square root of the length. The crest factor of Pons polynomials is square root of two. The, the soup norm is just square root of two times the, the, the times the uh, square root of the length, whereas the Walsh function, the the the, uh, the, um, the 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 crest factor is as large as possible. It's square root of the length. The, the Pons function is square root of two independent of the length. That's that's the key property. Uh, and uh, and uh, we we show I showed you the global uncertainty principle. The, 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 the correlations are quite important. You, you, uh, the, the, well, uh, so the, these are Pons and these are Walsh. The the uh, the red ones are the, uh, are the auto correlations of the coefficients, and and you see that the Pons are much much better than the Walsh. The blue ones are the cross correlation, and the Walsh are in fact a bit better than Pons. But but the uh, ponds are also very low. Note that uh, and um, from minus a quarter of the length up to plus a quarter of the length, uh, um, um, except for the peak, which, which of course has to occur in the middle, all of the cross oh sorry excuse me all of the uh, periodic autocorrelations of every ponds row is identically zero from minus a quarter of the length to plus a quarter of the length. That's also important for signal processing because when, when there are errors introduced, they're usually close to, 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 to where the signal is concentrated. And here, the, those autocorrelations are zero. So here's an example. So on the left is the original image. On the right is the Pons transform of that image. So... So... Oops, okay. I think it's a lot of Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So uh, top left and top right contain exactly the same information. It's an, an invertible transform, orthogonal transform. So they contain exactly the same information. But if you transmit this, it looks like white noise. I mean, it's not exactly, but it, it looks like noise. So somebody, if, if they intercepted it, would not really think that there's something uh, real being transmitted. Uh, but n now, suppose in, in the transmission channel there's a large amount of noise and, and all of that is blocked out. All, all, all that, from, from that original image, all, all of that is blocked out. And again, we, we're saying we transmit the same thing from, from the, uh, uh, in, instead of uh, transmitting the original image, we take this and transmit that, apply the same exact noise. The idea being when you receive it, you take the inverse transform, which the matrix is symmetric except for a scaling factor. So, so the inverse is identical to the, the direct transform, which makes the computations even more simple. So you, you, you receive this, 
Uh, if you transmitted the Pons transform, you received this. If you transmitted the original, and that's what you're stuck with. But if you instead you battery must have run out. If instead you 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 trans transmit the Pons transform and do the inverse transform, what you get is on the bottom right. So it, it, it's obviously a no very noisy version of what's on the left, but it's quite usable. And the computations are done in real time, and, and I, I have a demo here, which I, I'm happy to show people. And uh, sorry, I, I had to skip some of the mathematics, which is probably what would be most interesting to you, you folks, but that's my talk. Thank you. Um, I, I think the battery might, might be out, or maybe I pressed something and turned it off. There are some questions. So, sorry. so with respect to this example that you are showing right now, that's so what you gain is in computing time, the computer time. That's that's yeah. it. You said it is, it, it is it is not costly and it is very fast to reconstruct. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, I'll, sh I'll show the demo. It, it's doing the computations in real time on the demo, okay. real time on a you know, and a, a small well, laptop. Actually, the result is not bad actually. No. From the original. Yeah. You, you said it's a little bit nosy, like blurry a little bit, I would say. Well, for sure. It, you know, if yeah. you look closely, it's very, yeah. it's very blurry. But obviously, you, on the right, bottom right, you yeah. know what it is. If you got the thing in the middle on the left, you know, what do you do? So, like I said, I, I can show in real time the, this demo if anybody's interested. So, uh, maybe we, I have a couple of minutes maybe to show a demo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, if you, anybody... Um, unless there's questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, anybody want to see the demo? You, you, you can see, if you stand up, I think you can see it pretty clearly. Oh, yeah, good idea. Take a movie. And <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, that's, yeah. So, uh, as as I said, it, it's it's all in real time. Hello. Uh, where, oh, there. So, uh, if I if so, that's the Pons transform of this. If if I click on it, it does the inverse transform, and then you. You get back to the original. Now, suppose I introduce a whole bunch of noise here. So, for example, so, suppose. A bunch of rows were just bl blocked. Um, um, I, I use uh, uh, um, um, a picture of a page of text just because it, 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 it's good f f for, for uh, um, 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 illustration purposes. Uh, my, my hand is not too steady, but anyway. Okay. All right, and when I take, take so it's the same noise there. Also, I'll add some uh, uh, additive white. Gaussian noise, which is a standard example of noise for digital signal processing. I'll add a bunch of that. And if I add too much noise, then uh, what, 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 what we, we, we receive, you'll be able to read, but I, I'm pretty confident. And then I'll add some of what's called speckle. And now I'm going to click this, and it'll do, do the computation in real time, and that's what you get. It looks like magic. I mean, it's on there. Uh, so if, if if you don't know the the secret sauce, what what how would how the uh, transform was made, you would receive this, and what do you do with it? But if you know the transform, so the inverse transform, you take that inverse transform, and that's what you get. There's, but like I said, there's so much mathematics left to be done, and it, it, there's really something fundamental that we're missing here. I, I, I think I told Alexi. Uh, um, I read an article in the New York Times about um, 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 a neuroscientist named Rudolfo Linus, who to was talking about how information is processed in the brain. And he said information comes in and it gets spread all around the brain. And then when we want something, somehow we're able to pick it out. Well, the language that was in this article was exactly the language we were using to talk about this Pons transform. And I mean, if ET is trying to talk to us, 
because of all the noise in, 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 uh, that's, that, that, that's in the, uh, not the atmosphere, but outside our atmosphere, it, 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 uh, it would be logical to use some sort of an energy spreading transform before sending the signal. And so uh, we, I've, I've uh, well, it's a lot, there are many stories about this, so.